Thanks for coming here today. I appreciate this opportunity to share with you the intrepid story and our amazing portfolio of assets. Um, I will be making some, potentially making some forward-looking statements, um, but I'd like to start with, you know, why invest in, um, in Intrepid? I mean, everybody knows where we are in uh, the electrification of the planet and decarbonization. Um, Intrepid was started with the focus of uh, um, building out a portfolio of assets um, focused on essential metals, copper, silver, and zinc. We have three compelling district scale projects all located in Arizona, and we have a very experienced team, and we continue, will continue to expand that team as we develop the project. A little bit about our capital structure. Um, you know, nowadays or today's metal prices and everything has have us a little bit lower than 20 million market cap. Um, we have about 47 million shares outstanding and fully diluted at 75 million. Where we are in the development life cycle um, is is um, earlier on than some of our neighbors who have been very successful, and so I, I show this slide to illustrate the potential upside that you have from um, investing in, in Intrepid. Um, we're getting the story out now, and uh, it, has, it have been for a, a little while and everything, but we had a recent drill program with some pretty impressive and exciting news release or results. And um, some of our friends in the, in our, in the neighborhood with similar assets um, are further along in the advanced stages, and you can see where they're sitting right now. We hope to be there with them in the near future. Like I said, we're located in Arizona, all three of our projects. Um, two of our projects, Corral and Tombstone, are, are located in Cochise County. Um, Cochise is a very mining friendly, uh, you know, county with a rich history of successful mining operations and recent copper mine permit approvals, um, as such with the uh, Johnson Camp in Excelsior, just to the north of us. And, um, and also, we have the Mesa Well project just in the north, just north of us in Graham County as well. What's important to note about all these is when we started this portfolio of assets, um, we started with a de-risking view, like right out of the gates. We looked for assets that were not located in national forests and, forests and protected areas. So right away, taking that off the table. Again, Arizona is a tier one mining jurisdiction. 70% of all the U.S. copper is produced in Arizona. It's the largest mineral producing state in the U.S. and as such has a very supportive government. We have uh, year-round access to all of our sites, great infrastructure, paved, paved and gravel roads throughout the state, and generations of skilled workforce. Let's talk a little bit about, high, about uh, Corral Copper. Corral is a high-grade district-scale advanced exploration opportunity. We have over 50,000 meters of historical drill data from the site of near-surface mineralization of copper, silver, zinc, and gold. There's been historic small-scale mining since the late 1800s in this area and through the early 1900s. Corral sits on a three-and-a-half-kilometer trend of shallow mineralization and remains open in all directions. Um, in the spring this year, we had a, several exciting holes. One was uh, hole number 23, which we hit 113 meters of 1.5% copper, 0.5, or 0.5 grams per ton gold, and 8.2 grams per ton silver, including one interval of 1.4 meters at 20.2%. We sit on a consolidated uh, uh, and dominant land position in an established mining district. We've, uh, we've got nearly 9,600 acres, or 15 square miles, of mineral rights, including 1,800 acres of patented mining claims and surface rights, so private land. Um, the previous fractured land ownership is something that we believe has been a barrier to other groups. Um, 
it's a, and it's also a reason why we, we don't have any of that historical core because there were so many um, disputes and feuds between the various groups and I think other um, development companies came in and, and, uh, and, and saw the struggle that are the challenges that they might have with trying to consolidate this land package. And, but that's what we've spent the last 18 months to two years doing is, is really de-risking and securing this land package for, for our project. <clears throat> Again, it's an established mining region in Arizona, 15 miles east of the famous mining town of Tombstone and 22 miles north of the Bisbee Mining Camp, which was the Copper Queen project owned by Phelps Dodge, now, now Freeport McMoran. Um, mention that a little bit later again in the, the, uh, how that compares with Corral. At Corral, there's significant copper plus gold, silver, and zinc. Um, it's important to note that there's been over 36,000 meters of, of um, drilling done on this three and a half kilometer trend. It's, um, it, it's all private lands uh, on this trend. So it's private surface rights and patented mining claims. So permitting is very simple. Uh, um, there's been sporadic ex exploration from numerous companies that dates back to the 1950s. And um, what we did in the spring 24 drill program is validate that historical data. Like I said, we don't have any of the core, but we have all the data. And we, but we needed to go back and validate, validate it with some actual drilling. And, and it was very successful. What's important to note as well is that the mineralization remains open with several new targets that we've identified through the geophysics that we've done throughout the, throughout the last year or two. Again, Corral is shallow, shallow mineralization. Shallow mineralization, uh, private lands, Arizona, not on any kind of uh, encumbrances of uh, national forest or anything like that. So it's easy to see here with the mineralization coming to surface and going to depth, um, the open pit opportunities and potential starter pit opportunities here. Again, the phase one drilling program was very successful. We had hole 23, which I mentioned earlier, with 113 meters of one and a half percent copper. We also saw 119 meters of 0.68, almost 0.7 percent copper, and 124 meters of a half percent copper. So some very exciting intervals, um, all based on historic um, drill data for locating these holes. And you can see that three and a half mile trend between our, our three main zones, the Holiday, Earp, and Ringo, playing off of that uh, whole corral, OK Corral, Tombstone theme. Ringo was our, our most notable zone. Uh, we had the, the best data for that as far as uh, we knew where the hole locations were definitively with, with, uh, drill mon or with drilling monuments or survey monuments and uh, drill collars. And so we put 13 holes of our 25 holes into, into Ringo. And, um, and again, Ringo's measuring out right now at about 900 meters by 800 meters, and very similar in size and mineralization type of deposit as the Copper Queen project, or Copper Queen, Queen Mine in Bisbee, which started out at 53 million tons and 6% copper. And eventually they found, while they were mining that, they did find the porphyry root system, the source, and mined for another 60 years. So another cross-section of Ringo showing, comparing some, um, the most recent drilling um, in 2024 and also including uh, the, the black dots on the surface or the, the recent drilling, the gray dots on the surface are the historical drilling, but you can see the continuity of the high-grade zone, but also notice that the, the mineralization does, does also continue to surface. So again, the, the 20... 0.2% copper um, is in that upper right-hand corner there, um, and that's, that's what that core looks like. It's pretty impressive. Uh, 
Well, again, um, our next project, next one that we get a lot of attention for, and sometimes more attention and more interest than uh, Corral is our Tombstone South. It's Tombstone South is a potential to discover substantial high-grade silver, lead, zinc veins, and carbonate replacement deposit, or CRD. Um, it's in a, again another prolific mining district that's uh, you know has billion-dollar copper deposits, extremely strong similarities to the Taylor deposit, um, which was Herm is the Hermosa mine, which was sold to South 32 from Arizona Mining for 1.3 billion in 2018. But Tombstone's not located in a national forest. I actually oversaw the, um, the feasibility study on, uh, on uh, Hermosa. It's a great, great ore body. Uh, it's on a postage stamp of a, of a property on the surface, and it's not going to grow. Um, the high grade, there's been um, historic drilling at Tombstone that's, that's showing some really high grade intersections. We've already got drill permits granted, and the infrastructure, just like at Corral, is is amazing. You know, extremely accessible. You know, road access right onto the drill pads, and uh, and uh, you know, power nearby, full power nearby. And that's in, you know another thing to note is there's a decent rail system in the, in this part of Arizona as well, which you know down the road when we do economics, I can only imagine is going to um, make the transport costs extremely attractive. Again, Tombstone, uh, very similar to the Taylor deposit. It ticks all the boxes. CRD mineralization in between the, 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 at the strata between the siltstones and the Paleozoic limestones. There's a spa just like at uh, Taylor, there's a spatial relationship uh, between the intrusive fault systems and the porphyry mineralization. And same, same types of host rocks, same Paleozoic carbonate limestone host rocks. And to illustrate that, this figure shows, you know, we have to the northwest of the property, there's a low-grade, non-economic um, porphyry system, and it's adjacent to a fault system, the robbers, what we call the robber's roost fault, and that intrusive it, uh, provides the um, the pipeline for the, the source of the hot, the, the heat source from the porphyry to push those hot fluids up into that zone, just like in Taylor, where there, that interface between the siltstones and the limestone, the Paleozoic limestones, um, has the, shows the um, Taylor deposit mineralization, primary mineralization. So, but there's been historical drilling. Um, it, on the property um, in 91, 95 by BHP, and um, in 2007. Uh, but the, the thing is, nobody's gone deep enough. Nobody's gone through that interface between the siltstones and the limestone, the Paleozoic limestone, where where the mineralization uh, resides at Taylor. So. What we did in 2022 is we did a large dipole. IP survey and identified a new CRD target. Drill per, we already have the drill permits. Uh, they've been granted for the new CRD targets. And we plan to test this new chargeability anomaly at, the, at that contact of the Paleozoic uh, limestones, carbonates. And you can see the proximity between the Bisbee group siltstones and the Paleozoic carbonates and the um, fault system there and where that high, that high heat source shows up. And so what we're proposing to do is drill four or 5,000 meter drill holes into that location and that's what's got most people really excited. So our, our geologists are, are chomping at the bit to, to get in there and drill that one. Last but not least is our Mesa Well project located in uh, the Laramide Copper Porphyry Belt in, in Arizona. It's uh, drill ready and permitted. It's got the same tilted porphyry footprint like uh, most of the deposits in Arizona. And we're seeing the same reactive carbonate host rocks which have the potential to yield a high, high grade uh, hypogene copper. And 
um, you know, one of the more notable things is about our location is, is our, our neighbors. I mean, we're sitting there in what we call elephant country. Um, we have, again, it's drill ready. It um, covers approximately 6,500 acres. It's accessible year round, just like our other two projects, not located on national forest or encumbered lands, and easy to permit state land. And again, targeting the high hypogene grades. We're seeing the same, the mineralization structural, is structurally controlled um, copper oxide. And um, previous drilling by Valet in 20, or 2009 indicated an alteration in mineralization intensity that, that increased as you move to the northwest. So our plan would be go in, there, go in there and do some additional mapping and sampling throughout the expanded land package, um, define some more drill targets through uh, some ground-based geophysics surveys, which we've had some great success with at, at Corral, and um, doing not just um, comparing historical uh, geophysics of VTEM and ZTEM, but doing some additional IP surveys combined and overlapped and, and considered with um, gravity surveys, which was um, was a bit of an eye opener for a lot of us on the, a lot of the geos as well, who had, who had not necessarily intended to start out with gravity surveys, but that uh, that proved pretty uh, pretty powerful in informing the new targets at Corral. And we plan to take and, and engage in some of those same, similar methodologies and modern. T um, tools in um, Mesa as well, Mesa Well as well. And then we'll develop out a, a drill program and see where we can go from there. We've got a really strong management team, leadership team as it is, and, and technical advisors. <coughs> um, we can, like I mentioned earlier, we continue to build those, that team out. And um, we will continue to expand on it as we further advance the company and advance the development of these assets. But uh, right now we think we've, we've, we've got a really strong geological team um, with technical advisors like Chris Osterman and, and, um, and uh, you know, Dan McNeil, Alan Wainwright, and those guys at, um, at Vector. And we just recently brought on a new board member um, this past week. Um, Matt Lennox King, who's got a strong history in this region um, with the geology, the regulatory and permitting uh, regime, and, and we're super happy to have him on board. Um, with that, I will finish up here and open it up to some questions. Yeah. Uh, we have two minutes uh, for questions. Just put up your hand if you have any. Uh, maybe just um, could you outline kind of what the next phase is at Corral Copper, given kind of first phase was, you know, conf confirmatory drilling. Yep. What, what's what's on tap coming up? Yeah, so we've we've laid out um, um, targets based on the last program and based on recent geophysics and every, uh, um, following that last drill program. Um, we've identified uh, a, a, a drill program and geophysics program. And the drill program um, will be, we hope to be coming out with that pretty soon. But essentially what we'll be doing is some more infill drilling between the Holiday, ERP, and Ringo zones. We want to tie those together and then broaden it out. So, so infill and step out. Um, staying close to some mineral, uh, to, to known mineralization. But then about a, a quarter of the program, we've identified some really interesting geophysics anomalies um, to where we, we joke internally with um, ourselves because we have some very conservative geologists that um, aren't very promotive themselves, which is great. It's you know nice to see that the, because you can when you when they're talking about something, you know they're not just trying to um, trying to pump things up. And um, but when we got them on site and we looked at that in comparison with the geophysics, the comment was, "You're crazy if you don't drill this." So um, so we're we've got some really good targets outside that are more exploration targets, which is about a quarter of the program, and I'd say 75% of the program will be focused on the infill and the, um, and the step out and, and broadening um, that three and a half kilometer trend between Holiday, Earp, and Ringo. Yeah. 